Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you how to deploy applications to WisePass. Before we begin, please make sure you have installed Cloud Foundry command line interface tools to your computer because we're going to use this tool to push applications to WisePass. And you can follow the link shown on the slides to the Cloud Foundry website, which I will show you. From here, you can find the installation file for your operating system. And you can follow the instructions here to download the application and install it on your computer. After you have installed the computer, you can do a quick check to see if it's installed and running by typing in CF uh, space help. If the program has been successfully installed, you will see a list of instructions from the help command. Okay, so once we have the tool installed, for this example, we have provided a sample code that you can uh, clone from our GitLab space by typing in the git command show on the slide with this URL. And you will, after doing so, you will get a folder. So for here, I have cloned into my sandbox folder. And under the sandbox folder, you can see a Java sample code folder. So this folder contains the source that we will be using in this example to show you how to deploy applications onto WisePass. Okay, uh, this sample program is pre-built, so you don't have to build it yourself. But of course, if you want to go through the build process yourself for practice, uh, this project is configured uh, with Gradle, so you can use Gradle to manage your dependency and execute Gradle commands to build this source code. And what's important in the source code relating to the deployment of applications to WisePass is this manifested.yml configuration file. So to briefly go over, this configuration file contains some of the basic parameters that you have to supply in order to successfully deploy applications onto WisePass. So namely, we have to include the name of our applications, um, the hosts, uh, which is the URL for us to access our uh, applications on the uh, deploy to the WisePass. But if, you, if of course, if you don't, if your application um, does not provide any interfaces, uh, the host uh, could be omitted in the configuration. And then some computing resources settings like memory and disk spaces can also be specified in the configuration file, as well as the minimum uh, instances that, that we need to start this application. And also the build path option, uh, this is one of the very important settings uh, when deploying applications onto WisePass because uh, Cloud Foundry, which is the basis of WisePass, uses this build pack options to determine uh, what libraries or dependencies to include in the containers uh, created by Cloud Foundry when you push the app. So according to your uh, programming language, so uh, Cloud Foundry can correctly containerize your applications and uh, have it running on top of WisePass. And here in this configuration file, we specify the path to our exe executables uh, in our project, which is which we have pre-built, and it's under the dist folder slash Java sample code .war file. And here are the environment settings. Uh, this is used for the Cloud Foundry to correctly deploy our, uh, the applications into our space and organization. And here we have specified the service 
names for the services or wise paths that we need to bind our applications with. So in this example, our application uses MongoDB and PostgreSQL uh, on wise paths. So we, we specify the names of our services here. And this section here, the services section, we specify uh, the service that we ask wise paths to automatically bind when we deploy the applications onto wise paths. And for credential and multi-tenancy setting reasons, we did not include PostgreSQL in the auto bind configuration, which I will explain a little bit later. So this is the sample uh, configuration file and which we need to modify some of the sections for the purpose of this demo. So again, on the build pack, um, build pack is very important because it's used by the underlying uh, Cloud Foundry service to generate a container for our application. And you can check for what build packs are available on your platform, or in other words, on WisePass with this CF build packs command. Which I'll give you a little demo here. So we type CF build packs. This command will retrieve the build packs that are available on WisePass uh, that we can use. And these are the included build packs uh, in our WisePass environment. But of course, um, by following this link here, cloudfoundry.org slash build packs, you can also check for additional build packs maintained by the community that will probably include the latest uh, fixes or patch that's required for a specific version, say for example, Java for the newest version of Java. So depending on the need of your, uh, of your application, you might need to go to here and select the latest community maintained build packs for your applications in, uh, for it to run uh, to be able to execute correctly once it, it has been pushed to wise paths. Okay, so here, uh, before we try to attempt to deploy our application, this program uh, uses PostgreSQL and MongoDB as stated in the manifest configuration file. So what we have to do is to actually go log in to WisePass, log into our management portal and make sure those services have been subscribed. So here, if you have an account, um, you can go to our technical portal and on top of the technical portal menu banner, you should see a login option. And once you click that login option, like what I just did, I log into WisePass and this will switch to a MySpace um, icon. And underneath that, there's a management portal that directs me to the management backend of WisePass. So here I'm logged in to my organization and I'm going to go into my development space. And here I'm checking that I do have MongoDB and PostgreSQL subscribed for this space. So I can push my applications to my development space without problem. So let's go back to the slides. So, okay, so before we actually do the push, let me go into the manifest file and make appropriate changes. Okay, so here I can specify the name that I want to give to my application. So uh, for this purpose, I will just make it simple. Let's say Java sample code. 
fast than and for the host i'll just use uh, the same host name which will be the url for me to access this application and for memory here this is not a big program so i'll just make it 64 megabyte uh, limit for this application to use and this code i'll just leave default and for this build path here is specified to use a java build path uh, which is version 3.19.2 for safety reasons i want to make sure i have the latest um, I have the latest dependencies available. So actually I'm going to go and use um, this build path, this regularly maintained build path, Java build path. I'm just going to copy this, uh, copy this, uh, um, this settings here, this link here, and then paste it to our build path configuration here. And for, um, for, simple, uh, for simple deployment, usually you don't really need to include the org ID and the org name, but I leave it here as an example. So it's easy to find out the org name here, but what about the org ID? You can actually find the organization ID from your management portal. If you go into your account and go to my profile here, and um, you click, oh yeah, you click show your CF scopes. Here, the organization you belong to, and. Uh, uh, in front of that, there's a GUID. This is actually your organization ID. So like I can just copy this and then uh, paste it. Now just go back to my configuration file. And then I'll just paste it, which is the same because I have done this before. But this is one way you can find your organization ID. Or another way is to use the CF command line. So you can type CF base, so type org, and then the name of your organization, which is for, in my case, it's uh, peace. And, and then you can specify a parameter, which is, uh, I believe it's GYD. And here it gives you your organization ID, which is the same as what we can find from the uh, management portal web website. Okay, so uh, just to double check again, the MongoDB service name is MongoDB and Postgres SQL service name is Postgres SQL, which is, let's just, Come back here to double check for this development space and check. Yep, they're the same. So our configuration file is ready. So we can use this configuration to push our applications to wise paths. So I'm just gonna save this configuration file here. Okay, so at this stage, probably some of you will encounter um, a message by the Cloud Foundry, the CFCLI tool asking you to log in. One way to log in is to type CF space and then log in. And the command line interface tool will ask you step by step to input the necessary information for you to log into WisePaths. If you are a tenant account or if your account 
has the uh, privilege to access multiple spaces, here it will ask you to select a space. Uh, because for this demo purpose, I'm going to push my application to the development space. So I'm going to choose one, which is the develop space. Okay, so once you have successfully logged into WisePass with the command line interface tool, you'll see this information here. Okay, so everything is set and ready. So we have to make sure that we execute the push command from the directory that contains our manifest.yml file. So we can go ahead and execute the uh, cf push command to push our application. In this example here, it specifically, oops, let's, let's see, copy that command again. In this example, it explicitly selects the manifest file to use. But for most cases, if you are executing this command from the path that contains the manifest file, don't really need to specify uh, that parameter unless you're using another YML file in the folder. And here we have added the node star option for our application, because if you remember, uh, our, our application uses uh, two services, which is the, the MongoDB and PostgreSQL. And we have to do some manual, uh, manual settings for PostgreSQL after we have pushed the app. So uh, we delay the start of our applications. Okay, so once this is done, we just press enter to send the command and we can see you will start pushing applications to WisePass and create an application on WisePass and do all the all the executions, the backend executions by Cloud Foundry. So for this part, we'll just have to wait until it tells us that our application has been successfully pushed. Okay, so after the application has been successfully pushed to WisePass, as you can see on the uh, command line outputs shown here, uh, we can go into our management portal. And see that a new application, uh, which we have named Java sample code dash stand has been created under the application list section. And as we can see, because we specify the no star option, uh, this application has yet been started. So we will go into the next step, which is to manually bind the PostgreSQL SQL service to our application. So for here, I'm just going to copy this code. A little bit of explanation. So because we are su uh, supporting multi-tenant environment on WisePass, meaning that uh, we can have uh, different users or different applications sharing the same PostgreSQL uh, database server. So we have to specify the user group that this application belongs to in order to allow PostgreSQL to uh, correctly restrict the accessing rights for our applications to access only the databases or the schema that this application has the privilege to access. So for that, we I'm just pasting in the comment that I have copied from the slide. And here, my application name is Java Sample Code Dash Stand. Okay, I press enter. Okay, so here uh, it says 
the command line has been executed uh, successfully. So once this has been done, uh, we can go and go ahead and launch our application. And our wise path is very simple. You just flip the switch of your application and and just refresh this page a little bit so we can see the application is starting here and it's pending. And once it's been done, it will show a stage like other applications here. So, uh, yeah. Also, you can start the application with the command line uh, command. Here, it's it's very simple. It's cf space star and the application name. So, uh, it's taking some time. I'm just going back here again to see. Okay, so as you can see here, it has been uh, successfully started. Uh, so the switch has been flipped to on and the package state is set staged. Okay, so if you do this from the command line, it will be like, so I'll just cf state star and then the um, application name java simple code then so if you execute this command uh, which does the same thing starting the application again but through the command line and once the application has been started successfully you should see a uh, hmm successful okay so if it's unsuccessful, we can use this command here and to check the log, the most recent logs, and see what has went wrong. Okay, so in the log, we can see that the error indicates that the memory allocation is too small for the application okay so we have specified the application to use only 64 megabytes of memory but uh, the application is actually requiring uh, 228 megabytes so what we have to do to rectify this problem is to go back to our management portal select our uh, application java simple code dash then and we can scale the application right here so here we're seeing that the settings for this application is to use 64 megabytes of memory and we need at least 228 so here we select 256 megabyte and we scale this application as you can see it's very straightforward and simple so here we're seeing that it has been scaled to 256 megabyte. And after you have done the scaling, uh, WisePass will automatically uh, restart the application for you. So we can see that it has been successfully started. So once we click on the link, it redirects you to the application form page. And because we have integrated the SSO service, so the application log in automatically using the same credential that we provided to log into our management portal. So for more information on the commands of Cloud Foundry command line interface tool, you can follow this link to go to the official documentation page. And this concludes this video on how to deploy applications to WisePath.